republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public hearing, so we'll start with old business. And Andy just passed out a draft of a possible ordinance to consider. Do you want to elaborate or discuss that, any Andy? Uh, sure. Uh, I tried to break this down um, using ordinances that other communities have done. Uh, I added some things of my own. I took away some of theirs. I didn't think it would necessarily apply to us. Um, I decided it made the most sense as a new chapter. Uh, uh, so I put it in as chapter 120. So that is not in the same chapter as uh, a street solicitation we talked about last time. But we do specifically, if you look at the very last page where the signatures are, uh, this is designed to, uh, this ordinance would create a, a new food truck chapter, but it would also go to the street solicitation chapter and drop in uh, something that says, look, if you have a food truck, uh, uh, a permit you do not also need a street solicitation just for clarity's sake um, there are statements in here about the application process about insurance uh, some I, I left uh, more regulations about the signage on the truck than uh, I thought we would use but it's easier to cut it out than it is to recreate it so if you think it strikes you as a little uh, too uh, uh, peculiar uh, as to all those signage on the truck I think it was probably Crawfordsville that, that liked uh, to limit that, or Noblesville, one of the two, <laughs> had a lot of restrictions. Okay. okay. Um, but essentially, it would require uh, a permit be made through the treasurer's office, and I, of course, could help develop that form. And this is designed so that upon meeting the basic requirements, the application, proof of insurance, and, and the fee, uh, 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 that the permit would be granted. So this is not the kind that is designed that every request for a food truck comes in front of the Board of Public Works. Some communities do it like that. Um, I just did it much the way the street solicitation works, whereas if they make the request, the clerk treasurer's office can decide, they, they check all the boxes, and they have the permit, okay? Um, there's also a, a clear exception in here for any special event uh, uh, that the Board of Public Works may grant. So if the Board of Public Works says, hey, we're going uh, we're going to give the uh, uh, chili cook-off uh, special event status, it can, doesn't have to, but it can say, well, none of those are going to require a food truck permit because they're all coming in for a day, and we've been doing that for a long time, you know, that kind of thing. So a special event uh, can be a blanket exception to the requirements of this as well. Uh, the only the other thing of note, exception-wise, is a, a nonprofit uh, religious organization is, is is this is written so that they still need to get the permit, but they would not be charged a fee. So all of those, of course, are subject to change. But I thought we've kind of kicked it around. It might help to have a, have something on paper and you could uh, make notes on and, and that kind of thing. The event application, I think I sent you at some point, um, kind of a rough copy of what another community did um, and that would kind of 
supersede this if, if we had an event that we put out for chili cook-off or nickel plate or something like that would yeah that if, if the, the idea is if if the board of public works uh, uh, if if, a, if an organization comes and says we want to prove this as a special event if they come to the board of public works board of public works has the authority to say this is granted and we're blocking off the streets and they can they don't have to but they can say also food permits won't be food truck permits won't be required for this event okay so so look this over uh, I assume if you have anything you don't you just think we need to cut out or add to let Andy know directly uh, I do want to ask you guys uh, have you guys been looking at your council emails because I've tried to hit both the personal and the council just to make sure I get the message out. No, you haven't been looking at it. I didn't know, step right up yet. Okay. And same boat. That's right. I did that. I promised. Okay. I'll keep sending personal and okay. council. Yeah, I sent, I've been sending them to both. If you guys all get your board packets. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. So if you've got, I mean, uh, unless we have major changes to make to this between now and um, next month we can consider voting on this maybe or can I ask two questions real quick sure one question mm -hmm. so and this is just only for the, the I think it I think well, you answered my question but um, F under general yes F okay so I'm assuming because when I, I'm just thinking about the chamber stuff because they do set up on Friday night often or whatever the night before so mm -hmm. that would if they have the special <clears throat> exception from the water works then having those food trucks overnight would not be an issue um correct the the these but the special event could accept it but because uh, uh, i just thought about that i don't know if it needs to have a yeah. that says something along no i think just just make sure that if the special event covers the period where they were parked i think that would be fine yeah because yeah. they do go overnight and the other thing i know that um at some point some of those ordinances had uh designated areas related to that did you are we worried about that the designated areas like some of those ordinances showed maps the ones that i had gotten from aim showed some maps saying these were the preferred areas to have the food trucks in or do, do, is that something of is that different than you showed me this morning on the door i think yes, <coughs> the same thing yeah the same thing i mean the thing i showed you is where they suggested oh. when we met about the dora that they might think about food trucks but then the other one was something i gave to andy which showed which had like an amendment or an attachment or something yeah, that yeah, showed I, like I, a map I, I like the way there was one community who, who after they had figured out the, the language they wanted in the permitting food truck ordinance we just passed a separate uh, uh ordinance that amended their their parking schedule and basically created a food truck vehicle parking prohibition in the parking schedule which we didn't put it anyway so that one we certainly can put it in here, but that also is an easier component to pull out and pass on a separate ordinance. Maybe, maybe uh, we could uh, uh, sort this out first, and, and then, then as we're doing that, and and maybe Chief has some input as where he really doesn't want to see them, uh, and we could do that as an amendment to the park to the parking schedule. Because I understand the reason that they do that, or what I had understood from the emails, was that so that's not a free for all where food trucks are just everywhere. So some of the communities in the specific ordinances would say this is the preferred area, or this is the only area where you can be. I mean, you can be there with this food truck, but at whatever hours. But they had <coughs> some sort of um, attachment that showed you know, food truck friendly areas. <coughs> approved areas so I don't know if that would be relevant for here but well um, something had come up about um, the parks that there's um, an ordinance or resolution that says there's to be no um, mobile food type vendors in the sale, parks as far as selling right <coughs> so I mean I, I, will this um, override that I mean this doesn't uh, say except Amy's, for the parks. I think Amy's right. I, don't, I, mean, yeah. I haven't had a chance to read through it all, but I think we need specific we need designated I, areas I so okay. laid out, and that could include the parks. Including the parks, yeah. I think it would be it would help with clarity's sake as far as just you know providing some sort of order so that we don't have food trucks. Yeah. And you know, I mean, the, 
based on just a quick read of it, it could be almost anywhere. And I'm not right. saying I don't want food trucks. I'm just saying that it might no, be, I think they, be orderly. I think they need specific, need specific. And I think there has been some discussion uh, down uh, around the time theater because uh, there was a conversation with me about a permanent plug-in area mm -hmm. there, and then one over where they typically park during a nickel plate along Eighth Street, right next to the chamber office. Uh, there's a permanent. We can get a permanent plug put in there. And then the comment was maybe behind Duretti's, mm -hmm. that'd be maybe the third area. Mm -hmm. And then the other question would be, do we want to go ahead and put a, a spot out the park, city park, for mm -hmm. certain events? So I think all those need to be probably included in this. Yeah, and I have a map handy that okay. we were meeting about the door that they, that some of the folks kind of shared some spots. One of them, Rick, was the spot where the sheriff's building was potentially having a, a receptacle there. I don't know. I mean, that'd be a good one. Oh. Yeah. 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 I can add to that for the parks too. Um, that did come up today um, because we had an issue a couple weeks ago with a vendor in a park. Um, did some research and we don't, it's, as far as I know, it's not a written policy. It's always been a policy of the park board not to have vendors in a park. But there's, as far as I can find, there's nothing written down. And I know at the last park board meeting there was some conversation about um, allowing it for events, um, but not having just carte blanche access to the parks. I contacted uh, Logan Sport today and I talked to the parks director down there. How they handle it, they actually have a, a separate permit for the parks. They have a daily permit for events and then they also have a season permit that allows them to operate in the parks all summer. So. Um, the park board has a meeting tomorrow afternoon. I was going to bring that up to them again and then uh, get some discussion started with them on how they want to handle that. I'll let you kind of be the contact with Andy on the park part of it. Okay. If you would. Sure. You want to continue on with the door update? Yeah. Um, so <coughs> this was an idea that Ruth brought up. Um, it was hunted to me, so I um, attended the meeting that was required to be attended, which was, I think, in March mm -hmm. for AIM. Is that correct, Beth? <coughs> um, there was a, a, a training that they wanted you to come to to learn about special events and the DORA as it's a new ordinance, a new uh, legislation that I think was passed in 2023 and then, or 2022 and amended in 23, I believe. Um, so after we did that, the myself and Trent, um, Andy, and um, Uncorked, and uh, the brewery sat down because you have to have an anchor business to um, establish that. So we talked to the um, brewery, because brewery was just added in 2023 as an anchor establishment possibility. They were favorable with the idea of reviewing <coughs> that subject, and so um, I put a small committee together with Ruth and a few other individuals to discuss, um, including uh, Harry Webb from the Rochester Downtown Partnerships, to discuss possible locations, <coughs> boundaries, ideas on times, uh, purpose, et cetera. Um, <coughs> they were ranging related to the subject matter. Um, since then, in conversation, have had some suggestions on changes and some opinions related to the matter of hours, times, boundaries. Um, so I have just kind of put that in the recess of my brain just to keep that there um, and to really help us because it's a little bit, in my mind, more complicated than expected, just trying to make sure that everyone's needs are met. I reached out to, I found out about um, Logan Sport is doing Adora as we speak. They've done the boundaries, they've choos chosen the times. Um, they have their paperwork <coughs> in the uh, state. So I have spoken to the area plan director, Erin, there. Um, gotten all the information from her and the paperwork that she's done, sent that to Andy. Hopefully he received it. Um, talked to Andy Schatz uh, and asked him to attend our next meeting, which we the meeting of the steering committee, which would be in May, to discuss um, what we feel like from a safety perspective and a realities perspective would work here. Um, there are opportunities for up to seven different DORA areas, depending upon the need. Um, the reason a DORA exists is because it provides the ability for individuals to free flow in events, 
if they do have an adult beverage. Um, the other purpose is that for restaurants, like roofs or others, like um, uncorked, it takes away the need to have fencing for outdoor seating, so it provides an opportunity for them to be able to have a bit more of a free flow for um, economic activity. So um, I feel like we have just a few more conversations to have just to be able to make sure that we're um, meeting some concerns that were shared related to um, not opening up the Pandora's box for folks just to walk around the downtown with adult beverages at any point, which is that that's not the intention, um, but also to maybe provide some support. I don't know if you want to share your thoughts on on times. Well, no, just on the whole subject. Yeah. Well, you know, you can take, for example, just a Friday and Saturday night, right? So if somebody's at the brewery and wants to walk over to Ruthless, right? And they just ordered a beer. And they say, oh, let's go, let's go. And everybody wants to go. Well, this dude has to chug, right? Chug the beer. Not, not really that great. So you, they have the right then to take it out. So how late do you want them to do that on a Friday or Saturday night? And it should be the same on a Monday as it is on a Friday. And those are the questions that we need to answer. And, uh, you know, I think allowing that, and then you have to consider what are the other communities around us to do, because if we, if we make our stipulations too strict because we don't want them out on the street because somebody might get hurt, oh, hey, I'm heading to Logansport instead of Rochester. And you know what, I'll even pay for a hotel in Logansport instead of party in Rochester tonight. So. And there's a lot of things to really consider, you know, because I'm the one there every Friday and Saturday night till midnight, one o'clock, knowing what people are doing and knowing what they're doing when they're leaving my establishment and where they're going. And how often they go back and forth. I mean, I go back and forth. And it's nice because you, you do cross people on the street and it's fun. It really is. I mean, I go over to, I go over to the brewery you know, and then I, I'm like, boy, you guys are empty. Yeah, they all went to Ruthless. <laughs> we pass each other all the time on the street. It's nice. It's fun. So, I, you know, would that damage anything because somebody has a beer in their hand? I mean, you know, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. that. So, so it's really interesting, and it does, in my opinion, create a nice, fun community kind of thing. And I think it's interesting because obviously there's different stakeholders related to this. The businesses are all in favor of it, of course, because this provides an economic boom for their business, right? Every person that sat there in the meeting that was a restaurant owner was in favor of it. Then you have other folks who are not in favor of it because of a safety issue or because they are maybe just historically against adult beverages, and that's just something that they don't find to be comfortable to talk about. So I think there's many factors related to the subject matter that we have to really take into account. In my personal opinion, it's something that we should consider strategically to ensure that we're meeting some expectations related to helping the businesses in the downtown, whether that be looking at uh, potentially creating a door that would be for businesses for outdoor seating and then a separate one for events. That's been a suggested afterthought that somebody came to me about um, so that it's not just everybody walking the streets because I think that was one of the concerns that was brought to my attention. People walking all the streets with adult beverages and causing chaos. Obviously, we don't. We would not prefer that. Andy wouldn't either. Um, so, just looking at what does it look like to be responsible and strategic with this tool that the state has offered to be able to help the um, restaurants and events in communities. I cannot lie when I say there were about 300 people that were at this meeting that I attended who were all discussing the subject matter, all looking at and at different levels um, in providing this economic development tool um, for their communities. So as a point of reference, um, Warsaw is in the process of doing this. Uh, Winter Lake has already done it, so that is past. Um, Logan Sport, like I said, is halfway through, um, willing to walk alongside with us <coughs> just to be able to um, discuss the details. Um, I have thought that I might drive over to Logan Sport and meet with Aaron and just kind of sit down and, and share some additional 
questions or thoughts that you guys might have or concerns that have popped up. Um, so we'd love to hear your opinions. Maybe this is the second time you've heard it. The first time was when Ruth brought the subject matter up and this might be the second time and you may not have thought about it since then, but um, yeah. Well, you know, one thing is, is that when we discussed, you know, and I said, I said, keep people out of the alleys. So that would be, you know, keep people out of the alleys because the alleys are bad enough anyway, you know, in the middle of the night. Um, so if everybody was on the streets, you know, if the door area, then there was some reason why somebody said no during certain times the alley needs to be used. But that would be good to have different door, you know, during this event, this type of event. And yeah, the alleys are okay. But during these events, you know, during a regular Friday, Saturday night, no alleys. Yeah, you and know. so I think we're not going to solve that today. I think right. here's some of the other thoughts. Just everybody that's kind of looking like your cotton headlights. <laughs> yeah, like but, hear, but those are just know, different other. things that we need to discuss and say, hey, yeah, these are good and this will protect. And it'll also keep the eye on the people better, easier if you can, if you really make those boundaries where they need to be instead of making them big and, and a free-for-all, you know. It's going to so. be a lot of signs, going to be a lot of information sharing um, a set map that we have to come up with how many officers do we have on Friday or Saturday night it just depends typically two <coughs> and I think that's why Andy's going to be a part of that next conversation because I think he needs to know and, and have the input and insight into what we choose because the business owners have one vantage point Mm -hmm. Obviously, I have made no comments either yeah. for or against. So yeah, this I just I don't insinuate that I'm against this. No, I just, no, no, I no, 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 but no, <laughs> we're not saying that. It's just law enforcement obviously is going to be responsible for activity or out there. Sure. So I want. I'm not saying you're against it by any yeah. stretch. That's not what I'm insinuating. I'm just saying I want to hear your opinions because that will be extra potential duty that would. And I, yeah, I just want to be yeah. and, and knowledgeable on the subject. Yeah, and so same on me, you know, from the land, uh, law enforcement side of that, we'll thinking about all the details. So. And I guess the other question I have is, is this something we do on a every week basis or just during, like, if we have a monthly second Saturday, first Friday, something like that, we don't want to do it for those times. These are questions that we need to. Yeah. And those are all questions that have come up. You know, I think that that's one of the things of when I talked to Erin asking her, one of the suggestions that was made post the other meeting was, um, could we start small and see how this impacts the situation? And then if everybody uses it effectively, could we extend it a bit? Um, just that give it like a be, kind of like strategic. That would probably be my suggestion, you know, yeah. to see, you know, expand it as, we see it working well you know one of the one of the things monica had said she said yeah you know i don't want people bringing somebody else's drink into the establishment okay and that makes total sense so we have to have extra trash cans and, and of course the business needs to be responsible for the trash cans and the thing is is if they leave my establishment with a beer and they're walking over to monica's or putt's bar right well then, yeah, they're walking because their beer wasn't done. Now I don't have to chug it. Now I can walk and have fun, dump it before I walk in. Twofold reason. One is, is that now I know that they bought the beer at my place. And they're going to buy another one at Monica's, right? They're not going to stop at their car and fill it up and then take it in and then never spend any money. <laughs> They right. can't take, like when you were talking about the brewery to your place, yes. back forth. so you it's, don't buy a beer at the brewery and then walk in and sit at your place and drink the beer. And right, then, right. And that to, was because that was one of the... Out front where I can go or... Mm -hmm. or jump, okay. Yeah, because then that so way it's about, more... What about a, bottles or anything like that? Well, no. It has, it has to, to be day day day. It has to be in a cup. So the requirement is that there's a cup that they're required with some special Dora logo that says, you know, okay. is that just an, so it's yeah. Yeah. Is that an Indiana thing? Because I know in Florida, I don't they know. Said, I think it's a Dora thing just because okay. if they don't want, you know, glass on the streets and all of right. the things that yeah. would be, you know, so, so very no much like a detriment to all of the things. Because in so. Florida, it was just basically, it was the cheap 16 ounce mm -hmm. 
16 ounce cup. You can carry that around all you want and go from location to location, but you can't walk out this establishment without that cup. Um, and, and, and like there's rules guys that are you know out the wazoo for all the things that are related to who what when where how why what's acceptable so I mean that's stuff that Andy's obviously looking at um, just to make sure so I think they put a lot of thought into this opportunity um, I don't know who suggested it to the legislator but it was something that was supposed to be met for supporting downtown business um, and so yeah so we're in the middle of the process, and I wanted to get any input or yeah, questions that I made. Um, in May. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so I, I wanted to share this, get any input, so I can answer any questions or original concerns that may happen. So when I go talk to Aaron, I can go and you know ask those things. And there again, as you think about it and have concerns or questions, you can email Amy on that or Andy, and Andy will be at the next steering committee meeting, maybe. This Andy for sure. Hopefully. I hope. Oh. I think so. Well, I think as we have questions or whatever thoughts, take it their way. Hopefully, they can come kind of with a more refined package of of a plan. Yeah, I just I don't want to rush this just because I think there's a lot of things to think right. through. But um, just keep us posted as we move forward on it. Hey, would you be willing to share that um, the slides that you got, yeah. Dora? Yeah. Would you guys be interested in seeing this? Yeah. And, yeah. 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 and I can uh, send also, if it's of interest, just the ordinance that was passed to me from one of the other organizations. So that would be helpful to give you know that. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion on that? Is there any financial data? It's very new, but I can ask um, the AIM representative because they, mm, I'm not sure that they, uh, I know Logan Sports looking at putting a budget together for how much it would cost for the receptacles, for sanitation, for signs. Um, so I can ask Aaron if there's a cost if they have a budget put together. Anything else? Okay, I looked at the uh, responses I got from the mayor, the If I Were Mayor award that we approved back in January. Uh, I don't have names, I just have applicant numbers. Uh, the first place winner was applicant four, second place was applicant three, and third place is applicant two. So I will forward that to the government teacher over at high school. Say that again. What? Let's 432. 432. 432. Four? So we will have, uh, I don't, I'm trying to remember, I've got it on my calendar somewhere. I think uh, the honors night at the high school, which I think occurs Will, will occur before our next city council meeting so i may email you with those names once i get them but we'll keep it i, I just want to announce it that night kind of hopefully as a surprise so um we, we did have five applicants which i was a little disappointed in but i was told this week that there's some scholarships out there nobody applies for us but they're available so it's kind of i guess we can be happy with the five we got hopefully we can expand on that next year but it was informative to, to i think all of us to read those and see what the perspective is from the from the students and I think it should be a little bit informative to the government teacher because I know a couple of them were kind of uh, hadn't really way outside uh, our ability to make any changes on you know as far as uh, yeah so so they may be uh, and, and maybe with the combination of our mayoral youth advisory council that will get started next year uh, we'll be able to help educate uh, the students on just exactly what city government looks like so so that's that. Um, stormwater fee discussion. Um, does anybody have any comments? We're not going to do anything with that tonight other than if anybody has any um, discussion on what Eric Walsh delivered to us last month. Um, thoughts, concerns, obviously concerns. Is a rate hike, or a rate establishment, not a hike, but an initial establishment of a rate. Does anybody have anything you want to discuss on that at all? Do, and you may not know, Dwayne. The, the this keeps referring to this MS4 community yes as like the communities that should do this specifically but when I looked at the list we weren't noted as an MS4 MS4 is a storm is a designation for stormwater utilities okay so so yeah. that would be people who already had done that mm -hmm. okay I wasn't sure I was trying to read through this and understand but we'll continue to look at that um, 
Yeah, that's where we'll leave it right there. <laughs> Any other old business? Okay, new business, Alicia. Yes, hello. My topic is not as fun as Friday and Saturday nights, <laughs> but I am Alicia Sturgis. I am the executive director for Guardian Advocates Incorporated, doing business as the West. We have a West and an East division. The West currently serves five counties, and we have been serving Fulton County since 2020. We are an adult guardianship program. Very many of you familiar faces here. Mr. O'Dell, you are of course new. So just to give you a little history about our program, um, the Indiana Supreme Court um, wanted a program to help individuals who potentially had incapacitations in the state of Indiana and had no legal guardian per se or power of attorney or healthcare representative to help with those decisions that needed to be made on their behalf. So after gathering all their information, they created this BASIA program, um, Volunteer Advocates for Seniors and Incapacitated Adults. I'll get Beth a brochure that she can get to you for more information. But um, so we now serve as an organization 52 of the 92 counties in Indiana and we continue to grow. Um, we see significant referrals on almost a daily basis for individuals with incapacitations. Um, my previous director is now retired who came and presented to uh, the council prior to me being here today. And um, so I, um, I've now assumed her position. Um, the numbers in Rochester continue to stay pretty steady, um, which to me tells me that we need more um, spokes, spokesmen in the community to, to tell these businesses and these entities about our program and what services we do offer for guardianship, because we know that there are potentially many incapacitated individuals in, in all the counties that we serve. Um, we do business with um, police, attorneys, um, facilities, long-term care facilities, group home providers, hospitals, the courthouse judges have reached out to us um, about obtaining guardianship even for individuals who may have a, a discrepancy within family members arguing over mom, you know, to, to be that intercessor for them. Um, and Mr. Andy here, his law office, because we are a not-for-profit 501c, um, we ask for pro bono representation when we um, petition for guardianship. So his law office has been such a blessing to us in representing us on the six cases that you see here today. Um, so with that being said, in order to reach out to the community more about our program and our services and considering we are a volunteer based program we have recently hired and trained sandy montgomery she is going to be our outreach uh, community coordinator and she's going to be going into the community reaching out to these entities and these uh, different providers giving them more information about our program seeing if she can get more volunteers because the volunteers will be our hands and feet in the community once we establish the guardianships and get these individuals uh, established with the care and, and um, even a living situations that they need. That's my priority. That's my job. And then once it's all settled, we, we hire and train the volunteers to come in and be the advocate for these individuals. They are required by state law to do a one once a month visit with these individuals but our volunteers that we have now which is approximately 16 and we need a lot more <laughs> in our five counties are absolutely fabulous they go above and beyond um, out of the kindness of their heart to advocate for these individuals and um, we say very very side by side with them when they're advocating for these clients um, to make sure that they're getting the best care that they need and our our responsibility as a guardian is to make sure that we are bringing quality of life to these individuals. Um, we see a lot of crazy situations. We've been in some pretty deplorable 
um, conditions and homes and stuff with individuals who've maybe had dementia, Alzheimer's, and just lost track of how to really function. So um, Sandy, once she gets her volunteers trained, um, then we would partner them with um, with a client and um, but I think as she's she's trying to get the volunteers and pro providing this information this will give the community the ability to see that they have a program that can serve them and we're not I mean we do a lot of resource work too um, we're all about least restrictive alternatives so if a family member comes to us and says hey um, Grandma's not doing so well, but she still has some capacity. You know, we can guide them and direct them on how to become a power of attorney or, you know, um, even if they just need outside resources such as Area 5, um, we can direct them in that way as well. So we're somewhat of a resource uh, program as well. With that being said, so in 2020, I believe that the City Council had... Um, Excuse me on my numbers I believe they had contributed about 2,500 and then in 2021 we had asked for 2,500 again 2022 5,000 and then last year we asked for 7,500 and this is because our program is growing staff volunteers it, it's come a long way since 2020 believe it or not but we want to grow it even more and we only feel that it's fair that with the numbers that you see here on the 8% being served for Fulton County, that we come to you today and ask that for not only for your, your continued support, but for a contribution for our program for 2025 in the amount of 6,000. So we actually have three entities right now in, in this community that supports our program um commissioners city councils and nicf so and again with the help of sandy i think that we can broaden that to lessen it on everybody else or you guys who are currently contributing so beth you said is that what would you say we did last year yeah i think they gave you 7500 last year yes 23 or 24 for 20 uh, for 24 25 so this is for next year yeah. 25 for 25 yes later i'm here after. today yep and, and i can come back later in the year just to kind of give everybody a reminder and stuff we just kind of wanted to get started earlier this year because different counties different timelines so and a new face and a new face so yeah and like i said because we are we've got sandy now and we're going to be growing in this community we are asking um, for 6000 for next year instead. So, let me, does each entity, so the NICF, the commissioners, and the council, not just for city council, all equally give six? Is that? Is that's it? what we ask for, yes. Okay. And that's what has been, everybody's kind of just followed the same pattern over the years. So with, with all of our counties, so yeah. And that money goes towards providing the resources or providing the staff or the staff and, and that's the thing about our program is that we are very minimal staff the the Supreme Court's created it that way so it's volunteer based we have currently she's our half because she does do business for the East as well so we currently it's me and my case manager there's two staff members on board and um, we would love to hire another case manager um, because I mean, as the numbers continue to grow, we, we currently have, um, aside from this, it says zero for the pending cases, but we do have a couple cases over at um, uh, Life Care Center that she was working on referrals for, and then one community referral from Area 5. So they're there, just gotta get there to get, it's a process, so getting the guardianships and everything. Is it usually a guardianship? There's one more question. Mm -hmm. Is it usually a guardianship because there's been a negligent activity, or is it a guardianship because somebody was voluntarily recognizing that that didn't happen and needed some support? Right, so there's typically three standards. They have to be above the age of 18. They have to have a doctor's 
physician's report showing some type of incapacitation. This is in order for us to obtain guardianship. So, and then um, without family or anybody to act in that role. Um, now, we get community referrals on individuals who um, may be showing or exhibiting, or maybe there may be some exploitation going on. Family members, per se, may be exploiting these individuals for money. Um, <coughs> Uh, much like the area five referral the gentleman's blind so area five when they go out and do their assessment on him and they see the condition of his home and his mental status <coughs> and paranoid and delusional and that would those are two um, general indications that somebody may have an incapacitation and so we follow up with the physicians to get those reports and then um, and then once we've got our documentation and we, we do we work almost as an APS as well because we do the investigating of any potential family members um, even out-of-state family members we've ran across one of our clients has ten brothers and sisters I would have never guessed and um, seven of them are out of state but we got to make that contact with them to say hey do you want this position of being guardian over your loved one and if they say no then we have them sign a waiver just giving us consent to proceed with it and I mean just what our volunteers I can't go back that to that enough what our volunteers do for these individuals to bring better quality and to advocate for them it's just I mean I love doing what I do so this isn't my favorite part but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've assumed this position now so I guess I don't have a choice but yeah also I did want to advise you so the Indiana Supreme Court, they do what's called a two-for-one match. So we apply for a grant in November every year um, with the Vazia, it's ISO, I, ICOS, I don't know if I'm the acronyms right, but um, so we apply for a grant through them every November and if you get 35000 in the communities, they'll, they'll contribute up up to 75,000 to your program but we were told that 2025 is when their um, funding was established for whenever they created the, the budget for this program um, so they may not have money next year <laughs> and um, the last two years we've, we've, we've only seen 50,000 of that 75,000 and to be honest I don't know that we'll ever get back up to that 75,000 so and they strongly strongly encourage us to get community support for this program so okay, so Beth this is in the budget I assume because we've done it in the past for you know I don't know where it would be in the budget I mean it's but it's been done there's a, there's a dollar there's amount and it doesn't even, break out for each individual like, one so I recall it seems like you talked about it but I don't think you put it in there's I think there's a line item that has a large number but there's several entities that are part of that so right I think Linda typically had identified edit funds does that <coughs> make sense I, uh, I don't remember yeah, we, we, we gave 2500 the last few years, and I'm trying to think what, it, what sure fund that did come out of. Last, the last year's funds here. I'm kind of confused on the dollar measure. We've always given 25. Pardon me? She said here, what she wants, that's not what she wants. She's asking, she's not asking. Here's the motion. I've got Sean's letter. Oh, that was it. Here's the motion. 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 Here's the mot
my CEO, and then now we have a community outreach. Yes, it is for, but it is for employee budgets, but it's also for um, if any of our clients needed anything. We're not going to say, oh, you're just crap out of luck now. You know, we would use our budget money to furnish that for the individuals. So we put it back into the community, and we bust our butts. Let me tell you, even though we're serving six in the county right now. It's there's some tough some tough kids we've got um, some intellectual disabilities and then some with dementia so um, I call them kids they're not kids but they're lovely kids <laughs> um, let me see real quick so with that being said on the eight percent that we're currently serving if you take from a hundred a two hundred thirty thousand dollar budget. That's eighteen thousand four hundred dollars for Fulton County out of that eight percent. So if the three donors all gave about six grand a piece, that would meet that eighteen thousand dollar expectation. So, but I do want to confirm for you though how much was given last year. Give me just one second, please. Is there? I thought it was five thousand. I just got over three hundred thirty-three. That's what we gave what? last year. Five thousand. Yeah, that's what was I it. Five thousand. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought the number was. It wasn't seven hundred. I think you're right. I think you're right because, and again, I apologize. I'm new to this and coming in on this. Um, if we were going to request the seventy-five hundred for this year, so but with only having served the eight percent, we we're asking for the six thousand. So. But well, we gave five last year. You're sure of that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Oh, that's okay. No, I, uh, I was trying to contact with I just completely blew it. No, no, thank you. Yes, yes. We've already given a phone and so on. Right. Yes. We don't really have to vote on this today. As you guys grow, as you guys grow, then how how do you intend on funding yourselves? Well, that's it. Is that as more pe people become familiar with our program, um, providers and entities. We can then request funding from them, so it's not all on the commissioners or NICF or city councils. So that's our that's our goal. That's our hope is to get out there and communicate that. And then we even thought about doing drives and stuff for funding and events for funding and stuff. Do you so. ever get families to contribute? Like you said, you may have family members that kind of ditched their people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we ever get help from them? No, they're taking the money. <laughs> <laughs> they have to <laughs> Well, we we have we have uh, we do have an endowment mm -hmm. that we would like to um, get that ball on the roll. I mean, there's it's not you, you have to have big funders for stuff like that. So we're looking at sustainability, huh? How many years have you been? Has this been? This we have been serving. It started in Tipton County seven years ago. Okay, and then came to Howard and Cass six, and then um, so we're going on our fifth year for Fulton and Miami. Since this is for twenty twenty five, you can yes. it to vote on tonight. So let's just think about think this about it. Yeah. The table next month. Well, yeah. yeah, actually, we should probably wait till the budget time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Last yes. year, last year we. Excuse me, but last year it was all voted on in September. Okay. After, after the budget. Oh, okay. 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 Perfect. Thank you. I, I was just curious. I read the paper that sometime law enforcement calls somebody for Fort County when you have. Do, have you ever called this agency for help in particular? Oh, uh, well, I did one time. Okay. And I think by that time that individual had gotten to Indianapolis, maybe. I think so and gotten the care that he had needed it was a homeless individual i believe so yeah so but we like again we're resourced you know we do our investigating just as much as aps or if there's four counties being called for somebody who's incapacitated <laughs> they always so you, give us a call so you get calls from four county as well 
We have, yeah, we actually have a couple in Cass County. We have a couple of their clients, so. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you an email just so you know. Um, I'm gonna invite you. So we have a, I have a nonprofit, and we provide opportunities for people to share about yes. their we different have, resources. Yeah. So I will send Perfect. you an invitation and connect you with the person that can that sets up those okay. presentations. That's great. So, can, so I, so I can learn a bit more. Well, that would be great. Yeah, and we're all about like I mean, like I said, we're, we want to get out there. We want the communities to know who we are. We want. Um, and not only, you know, the providers and stuff, but even family members who don't know where to go or what to turn to. So, yeah, thank you. I think we'll that. take maybe best lead if we can remember that in September once yeah. we get a new budget, because this will come out of next year's budget. Uh, and I can touch base with yeah. her and come back if you guys would like me to, to you yeah. can update. Hopefully yeah. we have more clients and okay. volunteers. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming up. <laughs> Came from Kokomo, right? Huh? You come from Kokomo? I, I we actually I have an office in oh. Galveston. Okay. So yes. All right. Next uh, item is, and I'm gonna, Christina, um, I'm gonna kind of tell what I know as our conversation went today. You're requesting an exception to our ordinance a little bit. Uh, you're wanting, you've got three dogs. I have three dogs. I have um, Ghost, who's an all-white pit bull. Um, he has heterochromatic eyes, so he's 100% deaf. Um, and then he has um, his best friend, Buster, who is just my little mutt, um, and he just turned five. And then we have May, May who's a German Shepherd puppy that my stepsister gave us in December. And then I have five male cats. Um, and, and these are all, the cats are inside, outside? Where no, they are all inside. They do not go outside at all. And the, the ordinance 92, in 82.02, <coughs> um, letter G says the, the ordinance reads no more than three dogs and no more than five total animals per household. Uh, I, it's my understanding we've made exceptions to this the past, especially when the cats are not feral. No, they're not feral, they're all. They're going to be inside. They are, they're bonded to my dogs. So, um, may we may have a long discussion about this. I mean, I personally don't see any problem with it. Does anybody have any problem with uh, making an exception? We have a permit on up in case we approve it for her to, to do this. What's the thoughts? Any concerns? I mean, they're all inside. They're all inside. When my dogs go outside, they are tied up um, because we were told by animal control previously that that was something that had to happen because our yard isn't fenced. Um, they don't leave my yard unless I'm with them and they're on a leash. Uh, my dogs are all vetted in Iowa because Ghost is deaf. He's used to his vet out in Iowa. So we just take them there for the dogs because um, Buster and Ghost know them. That's who they know. You live in city limits? I do. I live at 1408 Audubon. My, my question would be if it's, and again, I'm not, if they're all indoors, how do we know about this? We don't. Because she's decent enough to come and ask. Yeah. She's so identified. My daughter's turned me into animal control for having more animals than is allowed in city limits. And animal control told me to request a permit to have more animals than is allowed inside city limits. I was told specifically by animal control last week to request the permit. So if, if they're in violation, they have to come to the council and basically request permission to exceed the maximum number of animals. And, and this was a complaint from this well, one, you never had a complaint, did you? Oh, yes. Well, okay. Yeah, they, they, we were turned in for having too many animals. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, oh, by, by your family? By my daughters who live out in Iowa. <laughs> so it wasn't a nuisance issue. It was just that somebody knew that you had more than what the rule said, and then they said decided to. See, I would really like to say what's really on my mind. <laughs> 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 you are on camera. <laughs> <laughs> You're on camera. <laughs> You're on camera. <laughs> 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 so I'm like, has any recorded it been in your establishment and said, yes, there's um, no problem. The previous animal control officer, um, Randy, my, sorry, that guy, that guy was in my house multiple times when we first moved here because we were turned in for having too many animals we then took a bunch of them back to iowa to try to keep it like and he knew at that point we actually had six cats and two dogs um we took one of the cats back to iowa to live on my endless farm and then we got into the dog there's my stepsister um and you're not you're not selling them or yeah, breeding them i'm not breeding them i'm not selling them 
first. They're so what if one passes away? Seven. What's the plan? Hey. Are you going to replace them no, all or just? No, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. It just kind of happened. Yeah, um, my husband. Cats pick me. <laughs> it's not even a, a fake story. My husband, um, one, two, three of the cats actually came with us from Iowa as rescues. Snow, um, when I worked at the gas station out in Iowa when we lived there, he was just hanging around outside the gas station and my husband like picked him up, put him in the truck and said, well, you're coming home with me. <laughs> um, the animal shelter always needs volunteers. <laughs> I am happy to do that. I am happy to volunteer out there. <laughs> it sounds like you're just, I mean, it, it sounds like these are all just your fur babies. And they are. Uh, they are. My, yeah, um, that's my cat. My husband refers to them as his babies. He had a cardiac event last Wednesday. And when I finally got to Fort Wayne to be with him, the first thing he said was, are the babies okay? Because <laughs> my, my pit bull could see him outside because he had his event outside in our yard where my pit bull could see him. And although he couldn't hear what was going on, he could see the firefighters and he could see the ambulance drivers and he could see you know, the sheriff's officers guys. And he was just really not having it. Like he was going from one window to the other window and like trying to figure out where dad was, but like, what's going on, why is dad, why is dad on this big structure? And okay, Brian, there's been no calls related to I'll make a motion to approve the permit. I, I mean, I the animal control. Who did this? We're going to vote. Okay. Okay. All okay. Group, say aye. Aye. Here's your permit. Thank you. What else is requested? Yeah. There you go. Short and sweet. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, if you want to handle the ordinance and the resolution. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> okay, last month there was a little bit of confusion on the resolution regarding the golf and pool discounts and um, it, um, Andy wrote up a more formal resolution that we had passed and he advised that we probably need to have Brian sign that but in the next one on resolution 08 we're actually amending that because there was a lot of feedback and confusion as to who was actually eligible for these um, passes so we're um, amending the section 2 item J for the golf and pool discounts that all full-time and permanent part-time city employees and full-time elected officials may receive free swimming pool and or golf membership water board members board of public works and safety and park board members may receive a 50% discount the tree board and the Re redevelopment commission are not um, part of that and the reason is since it's a taxable benefit and we withhold the taxes from what is paid to the board members they're not paid they're, they're volunteers so um, we had to eliminate those and there was a lot of pushback on the fact that the water the board members were getting a hundred percent and you know with the golf course and receipts and all that that we thought 50 percent would be a better percentage so that is that one is the one that I'm presenting to be passed as a final one but I'll take, I'll take the for that I was thinking I didn't realize the IRS issue came up on the non-paid or non stipend positions which is also something I'd like to consider for next year we do have a, a redevelopment commission that puts in a lot of time as much time as any other board same way with the tree board and they don't get paid a thing uh, or get any stipend whatsoever so I would uh, like to just be in thought about uh, doing something uh, with them for next year but um, I, I'm in agreement with this after finding out what we found out since so uh, I suggest we pass this so avoid the original one yeah well, no, it just it. amends it. And Brian had to sign it, and then this one oh, amends so it totally. Yeah, yeah. they don't sign this one. So, need a motion to approve that. Make that one reading. Oh. You don't have to do it. It's a it's a resolution. It's not an ordinance. Right. We have to have one reading for resolution. No. Yeah. We don't. Well, you don't have to. Have any no, have to. You just refer to it in the minutes. Yeah. Okay. Great. And Brian is the only one that needs to sign it. So, so Brian Pittsburgh made a motion. Second. Don't worry about it. I'll do that. The next one is a resolution um, regarding the AIM Insurance Trust um, that we're changing medical and dental and vision coverage to the AIM um, Medical Trust 
from our current ones. And so this is just a resolution for them that they are requiring that saying that the city council has approved our changing carriers. So that's what this I one is. I assume this is a savings? Yes, yeah, it's like 90000 a year. Hmm. Is the wow. coverage comparable? Yep. Yes, it's the exact same coverage, okay. and it's actually better. It have better coverage for those who choose to bring their spouse right. or families on board. So that was the reason we were looking into it, and then we, the benefit also was that it was cheaper. Um, but we were trying to do something for the employees um, with their spouses and families. So and this is something that the department heads were all involved in the discussions, and it was there. I mean, I heard the comment. This is a no-brainer. So thank you, Beth. Well, it was actually department heads are the ones that spearheaded it. And I'll make the motion to uh, adopt resolution 9 2024. I'll second. Been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. <coughs> aye. Okay, next. Okay, finally, the water board passed some um, rate increases. Hang on a second here. My papers. Talking about over. hookup fees? Pardon? Talking about hookup fees? Okay. Yeah, that. Um, they weren't increases, they were actually. Right, it was like adjustments. how much it was costing to go out after hours for. There was some increase on after hour work, but we had a hookup fee that needed to be more fairly adjusted. Cap fees. Cap fees, thank you. Yeah. And road cut fees and so forth. Yeah. So. I have it not here, but anyway. Um, for some reason, I do not have those on here. What do you say, right here? Sorry. The tap fees, like he was talking about, changed. Um, it was 5,000, we're changing it to 1,800, so it's more in line with other communities. And then there's the additional road cut fee and the boring fee. The, the 5,000 used to include it all, so people that did not need those services were paying it. Right, and when we looked at it, and thankfully we had a resident citizen call in and complain about it very kindly, I might add. So we looked at it, Derek and I spent quite a bit of time looking at it. There's an 1,800 base and there's a 500, um, <clears throat> that's called a, I lost the term, um, special, uh, okay. it has to do with the, the size of the line run in, it's adjustable for businesses and so forth. But really the bottom, the cheapest tap fee would be about 2,300 by the time you add those two together. Then it goes up from there depending on whether, which side of the road from the main you're on, whether you have to have a road cut and a bore fee. And it could actually get up to five thousand if you have to have all those things. Sure. But the way it was, everybody was paying five thousand, whether they needed a road cut or not. And I didn't think that was fair. Mm -hmm. So we made some adjustments to that to try and get it more in line with other communities, cover our costs, uh, and um, only charge as needed for those extra costs. So that's that's the base up. Plus, we because of wage increase, we increased the after hours, holidays, Sunday calls, and so forth. So we feel like we have a very fair plan uh, in place now. So I ask you to, this one has to, to approve that. Uh, I'd make the motion to accept that because here, so we can uh, do one uh, reading. the water board I was sitting there, I was there with family and it was going on. And, and I know what's been going on. So I've been on the water board all the years that I've been in the council and I have to make the motion that we accept it for this ordinance. I'll second it. Okay, this, we do this have this one has to be one title only, may I say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we've got two of them here, so we're, we're just talking about 10 right now, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, ordinance number 10 2024. Boom. Second, second. <laughs> is that it then? That was it? <laughs> First reading. No, it's the first reading. Okay, but don't we only have to have one reading? I know, but you only have to have one reading that everybody's here, isn't it? No, no, no. no, no the, the everybody's here rule allows us to uh, pass it in one, to one evening. Raise it and pass it in one evening. Got it. Um, okay. Sorry. Lonely. I'll make a motion to read it in title. Second. <coughs> reading it in title. Second. All right. All right, ordinance number 10 2024. Good title. <laughs> a discussion? I'll make a motion we read for the third and final time. Can title only. Ordinance number 10 2024. Okay, right. I'll make the motion that we adopt ordinance 10 2024. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 
And Ordinance 11 2024 is what we also discussed. So, yeah. and that one we, we just added the part in bold that says the service charge will be made for turnoffs after business hours and Saturdays, and service charge of $100 <coughs> will be made for turnoffs on Sundays and holidays because that those are outside the hours. And then on disconnection of service, we raised the um, one fee from I think 50 to 75. And the um, 125 if they, if they had been shut off one time previous it used to be 100 and now 250 and I forget what that one was but um, the water board decided that those are more fair rates to be charged for those kind of things I'll make a motion for the first reading of ordinance 11 2024 by title only I'll second all favor say aye aye, aye. Okay. ordinance number 11 dash 2024 an ordinance amending ordinance 10 dash 2021 and various sections of chapter 52 of the rochester city yeah. code make a motion we read it at the same time by title only i second all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. ordinance number 11 dash 2024 an ordinance amending ordinance 10 dash 2021 and various sections of chapter 52 of the rochester city code i'll make the motion for the third reading by title only i'll second it all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. Ordinance number 11 2024, an ordinance amending ordinance 10 2021 in various sections of chapter 2 of the Russia City Code. Make a motion for the adoption of ordinance 11 2024. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Did you get all that, Beth? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so okay, any other new business? Okay, Chief Butler. Good evening. Uh, for the month of March, structure fires, one in the city, mutual aid, one in the town, two in Henry Township, one in Abenami Township. That's fun to say, Abenami. <laughs> Idle fire alarms, two in the city, one in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. Brush fires, three in Newcastle Township, one in Richland, two in Rochester Township. Accidents, two in the city, three in Rochester Township. Medical assist, 19 in the city, 18, I'm sorry, eight in Rochester Township, one in Newcastle Township. Gas leak, one in Rochester Township. Gas spill, one in the city. CO checks, one in the city, one in <coughs> Richland Township. Service calls, three in the city. Canceled calls, one in the Henry Township. That should add up to 56. And we conducted one night of training. Uh, we had 11 applicants turned in. We will conduct written and physical tests May 4th. And then we'll bring the candidates to the Board of Works for selection. Also, too, the uh, contract for the new pumper tanker was awarded to Spencer Fire. Had the contract uh, signed by Beth. I will get that up to them. Uh, we're looking at a two-year turnaround time for this. So with the non-reverting truck replacement fund that we established years ago and the Lowett fund, this will be a cash transaction for the city. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Andy? Uh, you have my report. If you have any questions about the numbers, let me know. Um, other than that, we've got the baseball parade this Friday evening. Uh, the softball parade is Saturday morning. <clears throat> Matt Campbell's retirement party is this Friday from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. here at the Council Chambers. I invite any of you if you want to show up and express your appreciation to him. I would appreciate it. Um, I, I assume everyone knows Matt is retired from the police department and is accepting our systems administrator position that you allowed me to create last year at budget time. Um, we are bringing back police in the park. It's going to be on June 22nd this year. And then we have applicant testing scheduled for this Saturday morning. However, we have no applications turned in yet. all I have unless you have any questions. Uh, there will be Matt and Andy were recorded a radio segment this morning will be played Thursday morning during the trading post so if you want to listen to the good good conversation they had with Randy Wynn both of them so well, I want to tune, tune into that. Um, I think something else is going to and he's going to be uh, have a month's vacation to have a break there right? Yeah so his, his last day is until actually May 5th um, but this is his last week here. Next week he's going to be on a training. Um, 
and then there has to be a 30 day separation before we can rehire him back since he's leaving the city and being rehired by the city. Hey, Andy, what time on Friday is the um, parade? Which parade? The, oh, the, the 6 p.m. 6 p.m. That leaves yeah. City Hall. Yeah, so we're going to be out of here by 5, and then they're going to line up here, and the parade leaves here. And the parade on Saturday, where does that leave? Where does that start? Saturday morning, it starts at 9, 9th Street, the RTC, behind Centennial Park. Okay, that that's where it starts. Lot. It will leave there and okay. come down Main Street to 4th. And what time is that, you said? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Dwayne? Good evening. April 1st, we started bulk leaf pickup again uh, for the spring. That will continue on through the end of April. And starting in May, then we'll revert back to bag pickup uh, for the rest of the season until fall. We have installed the engine brake uh, ordinance signs around uh, the different entrances into town. Uh, so that was just completed this week. And then tomorrow uh, <coughs> at, on Madison Street where Hudson's building is, we are going to be moving the barricades out into Madison Street, cutting it down to one lane um, because of the, uh, the concern of trying to contain uh, that wall if it should fail. So we'll be doing that tomorrow. Um, We'll have a, a barricade up on the one end to try to highlight the fact that that lane is closed. Um, and then there's some no parking signs going up on the east side of the street to ensure that we don't have any cars blocking that. And that will be tomorrow. And that's all I have. If you have any questions. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Um, thank you. I thought I'd let Brian make the report tonight. No. It's been a long day. Um, the stellar program still goes on. We're putting that together. Um, the housing study is at a point where we're looking at developers and actual locations to start building. Um, we've got three developers who have been in touch with me last, not last night, the night before. I got a fourth one who's very interested in discussing what they can do. So I'm hoping that we can have multiple projects going all at once. Um, we'll see what happens at that point. Um, the other thing is I attended a ready to meeting today. Um, we are in negotiations we were told to apply for $80 million. We were awarded $35 million. Uh, nobody in the state got all of it. Uh, the Four Corners and Indianapolis got $45 million. Uh, we got 35 and so we are cutting $45 million. And I can tell you that the meeting today was pretty tense. Uh, I'm happy to say that Kokomo Miami County and Howard County took a beating, um, but I suspect uh, as negotiations continue, we will see some of that come to us as well. Uh, at this point, I don't want to go into any details because it's, uh, everything's going to change. It's all in flux at this point in time. So um, the last one is that there's Eli Lilly money out there. And I have put in $250,000 request for the Putts building specifically uh, for restoration. Um, and then I have also put in for a $2.5 million low interest revolving loan fund uh, for structural uh, repairs only for the entire county. Um, at this point, we would run that through Bizcro right now the way it's, it's set up. And so that's kind of where we're sitting right now. It's general, I know, but um, everything's in flux. So, but in good flux. So. That's my report. Good job, man. Good job, man. I do. I do good, man. Do you have any idea when the when the ready two decisions got to be completed, Mike? Or when do they have to come to a? 
the state's going to come in on May 29. And the bad part about this is that the state can throw our projects out and say we would rather you do these really? instead of these. I don't think they'll do that, to be honest, Bob. Um, but truthfully, nobody's going to get out of this without getting a hit. I expect us to get hit somehow. I don't know where. Um, I will say this much. It will be more on the industrial park side than it will be with Little Zebbies. Um, the state themselves elevated that project. Child care is critical. And um, some information I got a couple nights ago from Jana Vance um, just proved how important that, that project actually is. Nobody touched it today. We did discuss the industrial park. Um, I promise you between now and we have another meeting on May 9th, um, we'll be in negotiations over the phone. And that's why I say I really don't want to go in detail because I know, and you know it too, it's all going to change. Um, it's just going to be what we can limit on everybody. Um, but I, I prefer downstate take the beating, not us. <laughs> We, we do have a backup plan on the industrial park. We put an application April 1st uh, for through Commonwealth. It's, through, it's a federal federal grant, I believe, um, that we anticipated not getting funding to ready to. So we do have a backup plan that looks like it's got real good possibilities of helping us get some infrastructure out in that area. So we're still working with landowner, uh, the Cronenberg family, to try and work out um, the details of an option so we can get more acres out there. Uh, next, are you done, Mike? You yeah. Done? Okay. Uh, the Redevelopment Commission, there's a lot going on. I mean, there's a lot. Uh, if you want to know more about what's going on, we have a meeting tomorrow at 830 here. Uh, so, uh, largely discussed putts. I know, Andy, did you have your meeting today? Uh, was there a meeting today? With there wasn't a meeting today, but there's been some poor communication. Okay. So we're constantly in communication right now. I'm still waiting on uh, hard numbers from the contractor to know how we're proceeding. As you know, that building was uh, suggested or uh, said it was going to be um, handed to us. I don't know how to word it otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Gift wrapped and given. I mean, this um, we have to deal with it. Put it that way. So we're working on dealing with it uh, in a very quick and matter of fact manner. So. Uh, the other thing, uh, we do uh, did have some breakthroughs this week on the property east of the, the hotels. Talked with the owner of the properties. Uh, looks like we're going to be able to accomplish, uh, at least at this point, he's very much uh, in favor of us working with him on extending that road, McDonald Drive, over to Old 31. So we're still working through uh, some logistics on that. So that's a, that's a big big plus so and so far everybody's been uh, open to all the ideas of making that uh, our street uh, we think Walmart's could be in favor of having access on that side as well uh, we're trying to get ourselves in position to get a CCMG grant by next early next year uh, for the finished work of paving and redoing that whole street as well as the paving going on out to old 31 so I don't see right now I don't see any uh, uh, obstacles in our way of getting that done so that's just a couple things we got some other things to talk about but if, I'm not gonna talk about them tonight so uh, park board Bob uh, they, they met on April 8th I did not attend that meeting I went to the final four so I missed it but it uh, looks like they had a lot of good things they're still discussing the various uh, beach projects at the lakeside and beach that we have and they're also must be still talking about the moose uh, Wayne gave a detailed report about the parks that they're looks like they're getting ready for the year. It's uh, more about the pool, trying to get it going, as well as swim lessons. Uh, Summer parks reported. Sounds like they have. Looks like they have currently 75 kids enrolled at that date. I'm sure they probably have some more by now because I think they've done some marketing since then. And they talked about doing a five-year plan. Uh, some more must have interviewed another party there and look 
looks like they had some other discussion with uh, police chief shots uh, as far as uh, about the big pavilion. That was, about fees. That was the police in the park. Yeah, yeah, police in the park. Okay. And uh, very active group. They did, uh, they didn't say when they adjourned, but I don't think they probably meet like, their three hour like one. So <laughs> they did. Eight. They didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, like, only two. Yeah, only two. Only two. <laughs> any other? Anything else? No, on I don't know of any other. Okay. Really? Well, uh, Amy, do you have something? Sorry, I passed over. Do you have something? I was just waiting for you. No, I just that's okay. went right over. Nope, that's okay. Uh, I was trying to get numbers from <clears throat> uh, Janet, but I did not. Um, for the Animal Adoption Center, had its uh, event, Spring Fling. From what I understand, there was a large, I was the grunt work to take down the tables, but from what I understand, they had a large um, group of people come in for donations, so that's good. That's at the museum. And then Area Plan Commission, um, last time Dwayne put my report together, but this time I know a little bit more because I actually read it. So basically, we mostly um, approved a zoning um, change on property from highway commercial to suburban residential. Mm -hmm. I'm getting the terminology. Yep. Um, and then we'll be discussing other ordinances such as solar, solar. and um, potentially EV coming up. So it's very interesting. I'm learning a lot. So, yep. Good. Mark, do you have anything on the council for evening? Yeah, uh, BZA meeting for this month is canceled as there was no business to transact. Council on Aging met yesterday. Uh, just a few notes. Uh, the, the council, uh, if I think you all know, does uh, tax returns for folks that uh, need some help, and they, they did over almost 100 tax returns this year, uh, which is really really good uh, the bus trip to Maine that is happening in September is completely sold out so there are no availability there uh, the golf outing uh, for council has been set uh, for June 8th that's at the Elks and the uh, Council on Aging is hosting an open house on Friday June the 28th from 11 to 4. Everybody would certainly be invited to that. Uh, we have received notice the Council on Aging has been selected as uh, member of the month uh, for the month of June by the Chamber. And uh, they have hired a part time driver. Uh, they have been down a driver uh, on medical leave and uh, so uh, trips they still did over 2,000 trips uh, in the month of March but uh, they did hire an, a new part-time driver so, uh, any questions that's my report Ruth you know I'm, I'm kind of failing on this new date and time <laughs> I'm always having to cook. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so, so nothing to report. Nothing. I was there. And I, there's still nothing to report. Yeah. Okay. Three board. Right. Three board. Yeah. And they get sent yeah. out. Uh, compile everything for the next the, the spring pruning and removal list. And they sent out the uh, or the bids to various companies we'll see who responds I do about it okay order board kind of kind of well, cover, cover, cover about everything I was looking to see through my notes here as to what else uh, that we could have missed and really the only thing was that we didn't get in those uh, ordinances that we passed was uh, approved the two-year-old checks for a total of uh, $552.98 and uh, actually that is a, a normal ritual that they every Every year, there's two years old checks, checks that they pick up and go. And that's basically it. Besides what we had earlier, we did a we did approve, and I'm trying to remember the terminology. They, they did approve that was a fifty or sixty thousand for the steady member of the uh, lead, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the lead service lines. Service lines. Wasn't it the engineering? The engineering, engineering with Commonwealth. 
They were, yes, they did. Yes, they did. So, anything you want to add on that? Or not really. No. Okay. No. They, but it had that. It had that. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Rick, any good news? Well, not really good news, I guess, but <laughs> ambulance, of course, we're still working with that. We met with uh, Parkview a week and a half ago. It's one on one to make sure they was interested. They are. So we're in contract negotiations. We're supposed to see a contract by the end of the week or the end of next week, I should say. Um, so hopefully that moves along good. Um, press with Parkview. They are in the community. You know, they got the helicopter. They've got working with Woodlawn Hospital. They've got ambulance service in uh, Silver Lake, North Manchester, so they do got some around us, and uh, ho hopefully it goes good. Um, another deal we got, Amy, opioid money. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. There's an opioid settlement comes. We get an 18-year settlement, and actually the city comes to the county because it how small it was or whatever their portion comes well I know Amy has contacted me I give her a book to study she's been doing her homework mm -hmm. trying to figure out what programs fit that because there's restricted funds and there's unrestricted funds so I talked to her today on a on Beeman home I believe it was uh, they're, they're going to get a plan together and you know come to us I'd like you guys to be involved in it too because you guys got some stake in it so We'll see how that turns out, if everything goes okay, if it meets all the guidelines or whatever, but there is some money there. Um, so then uh, I suppose everybody knows that, oh, no, I better not say that. <laughs> She'll find out. <laughs> I forgot I can't. Oh, well, this is nice. Yeah. 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 It's a little late. Well, yeah, it's like, now no. that it's all, it's recorded. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you after the meeting what it's all. <laughs> It's a surprise. Okay, anything else we need to cover? You guys probably know what I'm talking about. But. <laughs> Andy, you got anything else we need to look at or nope. ADA concerns? Beth, we have it on our list. No. Nope. Okay. All right. Well, motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Been moved and seconded. All the way down. Oh, oh, we got to sign some more. Thanks, Brian. We all want to sign something. I don't want to talk about you. Don't know how to get it. Sorry. I forgot. I thought I was going to find them. Oh, there's an email out on that. Okay. They know about it then? I'm going to start here and we're down the line. Okay, I just want to make sure. No problem. Um, yeah.